Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be doing a review on the shop box by We Are Memory Keepers. I know this came out a few months ago and a lot of people were skeptical about buying it because of the price. It is $130 at Michael's which is a lot of money so I will be telling you if I think personally it's worth it for that price and showing you all the ways that you can use it. I originally wanted the shop box for mainly two reasons. One of them being I loved sharing my projects and scrapbook layouts on Instagram and I wanted a nice and consistent way to photograph um, my projects. And the second reason, I have a small Etsy shop and I wanted to be able to take nicer, more professional looking pictures. So if you are a small business owner or you just like taking photos for fun, this will be a really good video for you to watch. In order to give an honest review and show you if it's worth it, I'm going to be showing the before and after of each object that I photograph. So I'll be taking pictures without using the shop box first and then showing you what they look like with the shop box. And I'll photograph different objects so we can see which objects work best with this and if some just don't photograph well. So let's go ahead and get started. I've played with this a little bit as soon as I got it, but I haven't got too in depth with it, so I'm still learning as I go. Setting this up was pretty easy. It came with these really simple instructions. I will say when I first turned it on, I was a little concerned because I couldn't see any lights. I just heard it click and I could not see any of the lights turn on. But that's because you have to turn the dial a lot more to make it brighter. So that is one cool thing about this is you can adjust the lighting. It's not just one setting you have to work with. The first thing I'm going to be photographing is one of my scrapbook kits that I have on Etsy. So I want to do a product photo for that and I already set that up to save some time. And I'm going to be taking the pictures with my phone. And up here you can see little holes that you just put your camera in. So let's see. So you just put it like that. Like that and then you can see it like this. And it is nighttime, so there's no natural light that's going to be skewing the results at all. So let's go ahead and turn it on. And I always look at it through my phone to see if I like what I'm seeing. The one annoying thing a little bit about this is you can see these little shadow lines. So all I'm going to do is just adjust my object in here a little bit. And I did read that obviously you can see the outline of the box. So instead of zooming in, we want to take the photo and then just crop it because if we zoom in, you will lose a little bit of detail and it will become more pixelated. We can take a few photos. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the before and after. Here are some before and after photos with and without the shot box. Try to ignore the blurriness of the photos because when I was importing them into iMovie, I had to resize and they just got a little blurry. So just try to look past that and look at the coloring of each image. For the before picture, I took it just on my desk with some natural light coming in. You can tell it just looks a little yellow and my goal was to get a super clean white background, which was hard to do. And now onto the after shot box photo, again try to ignore the blurriness, but one positive I see here is there are no shadows and the background is all one color. Unlike the first photo where there was a very faint gradient of shadow in the background, it wasn't super noticeable, but I do think looking at the after photo I can tell there are less shadows. Now, my one negative is that there is a little bluish tint to this photo, and the background is not as white as I would have liked without any editing. Now, I also added the shot box after photo with editing, so it's like the after after photo. I do like the way this one looks. The background is pretty white, and there is no weird shadows anywhere, but again, that happened after editing, so if you hate editing photos, then that might be a problem. Um, I edit my photos no matter what, so it doesn't bother me and I thought it was very easy to edit after taking the picture from the shot box. Because I tried 
taking flat lays with white backgrounds before without the, using the shot box. And in my opinion, those pictures were harder to edit because I still had to work with shadowy background. And I'm not a super experienced editor at all. I just use the Lightroom mobile app and the Instagram editing. Since I have not tried the black background yet, I think I'm going to give that a go. So I'm just going to take these down and they just snap up and you can kind of roll them, but I'm going to save some time and just take it out. So I'm just going to place that right there and then unroll it down. I read some of the reviews saying that this, um, I don't know what it is, vinyl fabric, whatever it is, smells bad. It definitely has a smell, but I don't think it's bad enough to where I'm really um, bothered by it. So that's the black background. I feel like you can kind of see a little bit more of the ridges right here and you couldn't see that in the white one so we'll just see what that looks like and i think i'm gonna go ahead and photograph my scrapbook layout i love sharing these on instagram and a lot of my youtube su subscribers are also scrapbookers so i think this will be a good test to see if it works out okay so i like that Let's take a photo. Okay. Very cool. And those are gold stickers, so I feel like some things you just can't help but have but to have a glare. So again, I'll show you the picture with the shot box and without. When I was taking this layout, I used Mod Podge on the umbrellas, which gave it a glossy finish. And you can see in the after photo that the glossiness really catches the light. Again, there are no shadows, which is nice, but I almost feel like the photo is a little washed out. The colors look very dull. I did edit this photo too and fixed it, but I think the glue and the Mod Podge look almost too shiny here. So keep that in mind if you're photographing items with a lot of shine and gloss to them. Now you may be looking at the photos and thinking they have a, have a bit of glare, which they do, but I did forget to add the glare shield on the machine, which was my mistake. And it does come with the glare shield, which we will be using next. So I think that would have fixed that problem. So I switched it back to the white background because I like that better. It just looks more professional in my opinion. But the next thing I want to photograph is an actual photograph. So this would be a nice um, tool to use if maybe you want your photos digitally and you don't have a good scanner or whatnot. So let's see um, how well photographs scan. And this is a glossy one, so we can really test out how bad the glare is on this, if any. And there is a little bit of a glare right here. I want to test out the little glare shields that come with the machine. Okay, so wherever the nails are, like right here, you match it up with the little circle and they just magnetize in like that. And let's do the other one. So again, matching them up to the nails and they magnetize. Okay, so that does actually take the glare away, which is nice, but then it creates a little bit of a shadow here. That being said, I would rather have a shadow than a glare in my photo. Here is the before picture without using the shot box. Lots of things I don't like here. First, there's the obvious glare on the left edge, but the thing that bothers me most is you can see my reflection in the photo. You can very clearly see my phone taking the photo. Now with the after photo using the shot box, I am very pleased with how it turned out. The glare shields did get rid of the glare and the color is nice and there is no reflection at all. Okay, so in conclusion, I think that the glare shields definitely work. Although if you are photographing something a little bit larger than a photograph, it will be difficult because you'll have the shadow in it and it's easy for something small like this to just crop it in this little area right there. But if you're photographing um, something with a bad glare that is a lot bigger, there that, that might be a little bit of an issue. 
Lastly, I want to test out photographing just a regular product. So if you are a small business owner and maybe you sell cosmetics, candles, something tangible like this, if it is um, a good use for that. And I also want to be testing it standing up instead of it being a flat lay. I know there is a tool that you can get where your phone hangs down and you don't have to hold it, but I do not have that. So I'm just gonna be holding my phone, which I think will still work. Okay, so let's go see the before and after of photographing products. I think this one turned out great. You can see in the before picture it's hard to get a seamless background. I took it against the wall and you can see where the wall and the floor meet. Also it's not very bright and has a yellowish tint to it. Now for the after photo using the shot box. I love that the background is seamless. There's no line where the wall and the floor meet. Although like the others it does have a little a bit of a bluish tint to it which I was able to fix with editing but again it did need editing which may be a problem for some people. A small thing that doesn't bother me but may bother some is I think the shadow looks a little bit funny. It's kind of blurry and not defined well and I know some people want a very defined shadow in their pictures. That may have been from just my angle of the camera though. I love how the end photo turned out. It was super easy to make the background bright white and the colors of the washi tape really stand out. I want to make it a point that the edited photo looks as good as they do because I use the shot box image. If I were to have just edited the before photo, it would have needed a lot more technical editing. Instead, I just had to do a few color adjustments. Now the question stands, is it worth buying it? In my personal opinion, I don't think it's worth the $130. That being said, I do like the machine and will use it often. I just wish it didn't have as much of a bluish tint to it. I also wish it was a little bit bigger. I would like more room to make videos and to do that I'd need more space to use my hands. I think this machine is really great for front facing product photos. If you are debating buying this, I think it's a good tool if you don't have access to natural light and if you're not super great at editing photos. Because although the photos I took did need some extra editing, it was very basic to get the white background I wanted and believe me when I say I've tried editing in white backgrounds before I owned this machine and it was very difficult for someone who is not an expert in Photoshop. I will use this machine often for taking Etsy photos and Instagram photos, so, so I'm sure I'll get my money's worth, but if you don't think you'll use this machine often, then I don't think it's worth the investment. In my opinion, I think this machine would be better off if it were around $60 to $70, and even that may be considered high for some people. If you do want the shop box still, I would definitely wait until the holidays because I'm sure it will go on sale at some point in the future. This machine has so many tools and different backgrounds you can use with it, including a green screen, which I really want to try out. So if you want to see me try those out, leave a comment below and I'll try testing those out in another video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this review helpful.